This episode of Cigars and Sea Stories. Mike and Bennett are sitting down talking about three hots and a cot. And if you folks can't tell, I'm a little sick right now because my children are bringing home illnesses from daycare that is like patient zeroville over there. And it's anyway, so three hots and a cot. <clears throat> That's why I joined it's the really it's more of a It's really more of a uh, prison thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, because, well, in the Marine Corps, we don't get, I mean, like, we were talking about this earlier, we only get two MREs is what you essentially rate, right? And then potentially you'll get hot chow, maybe, in the uh, in the evening, but you rate, like, one DOS chow is two MREs per day in a given scenario. Right. It's a little bit worse than prison. I'm just saying. What do you think? Yeah. I agree. I, agree. <laughs> I mean, I remember, you know, of course, when you're out in the field doing dumb shit, you know, I, you have to go out with the mentality and make it MREs. Right. And half the time, let's be honest, bro, you don't eat half of what's in an MRE necessarily. Unless shit's real. Unless shit, unless you're all fucked up, right? Oh, because yeah. unless you need the fucking calories, you are field stripping the shit out of your MRE and you're leaving half the shit behind, right? Because who wants that shit? But in freaking dire times, you're eating that whole motherfucker. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there were numerous times out in 29 Palms where I was just like, yeah, I'm going to eat all this motherfucker. Not not because I was going to, you know, die or anything, just because we were going to be out there forever. Or what feels like forever. Because, but like, yeah. But like, the Miranda have like, uh, Sorry, you're breaking up there on Skype a little bit. What so are you either saying? like the Marine Corps Army theater feeding plans, like as part of the You're breaking up real bad, bro. Fuck. <clears throat> Sorry, let's give it a sec. The system. What about now? How about now? Keep going. All right, so Marine Corps regulations as well as Army, they have like theater feeding plan. Dude, I lost you entirely. Uh, Hello? Yeah, are you there? We are having some technical difficulties today. Still trying to get him. Mm. Yeah, I'm here, but hold on. Okay. Bear with us here. Call dropped. Getting back on with them. Okay. Oh, so much better. Jesus. All right. So here is the freaking point. All right. So I'm just going to say this. And you know what? If we want to keep this in there or whatever, Dave, whatever, bro. Yeah, and let's hack that. Freaking, <laughs> this is the freaking trials and tribulations of podcasting with fucking kids. Because every one of them during the summer's home, you know? So they're all on their goddamn devices playing their little bullshit fucking games or right. watching their movies on their iPads. Fuck. Fuck! 
Right. They're clogging up my fucking wireless. Daddy, anyway. Daddy needs to suck the ether. Ah, Usa. So getting back into it, you were talking about how the Marine okay. Corps and the Army Marine- have a theater plan, right? Yeah, they have fucking... It's pretty funny. If you've never read it, I, I would say that, that you do. It's uh, their theater feeding plans. And like what they've got timelines and condition bases, like whether you're expeditionary or all kinds of shit. It's pretty funny. So just saying. Basically, part of the regulations, at least in the Army, says that you cannot eat m- just exclusively MREs for more than 20 days. <laughs> I'm just saying, right. You're supposed to have other stuff interjected in there, right? Whether it's hot chow or something, which we did. Uh, but so, so 20 days and then maybe you replace like one meal, you know, for, I think like literally like a nine or 10 day period. You've got to have at least like one hot meal, but then you can go back to like MREs for another like 10 or 12 days or some bullshit. So pretty funny. I, it makes me laugh because God eating MREs for more than 20 days, bro, you oh. might fucking shoot yourself. I mean, I mean, there, there's a lot of people that have done it. I'm sure. Oh yeah. But, uh, and, and what they considered hot chow, you'd rather probably eat a fucking MRE. Right. I know. I swear to God, I'm ruined. I can't. I cannot. Uh, you know. You know, mermites. You know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, for sure. But not mermites. But not mermites. Actually, it's the like T rats. So the gigantic. Here, let's put it in the steamer. Yeah. And it's all in a big fucking can, mm-hmm. you know. And then they unpeel the can, and that's considered hot chow. What the fuck is the difference between that and an MRE? Well, all right. So we were on lockdown and kicked all the freaking. I, I'll, let me put it this way: I can never eat chicken cacciatore again. <laughs> it makes me sick if I smell it. Right. No, all I know. This, what you all mean. those peppers and the sauce and the whole thing, like, because chicken cacciatore has a distinctive smell. It's it's not like pasta sauce, you know. So if I smell that shit or see it or as soon as I know it's chicken cacciatore. I immediately get like this gag reflex, bro, <laughs> because I ate that shit every oh fucking my God. every day for like a month, and I just can't do it, bro. Can't do it anymore. Horrible. See, that's like uh, my my wife's family is Italian, and they make polenta, and they put um, chicken. Well, it's either chicken cacciatore, or there's another you know, like topping. And uh, I'm kind of the same way, but not with that (laughs) meal. Uh, And I ate it and I, I ate it. (laughs) Right. I mean, and then it was some years later. I used to really like chicken gadget. Right. It was some years into the marriage that I was like, yeah, no, I don't eat that shit. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, yeah, I, Pretty much for the past couple of years, I've just been gulping that shit down because I'm like, I really love this woman, but really, I hate that. Uh, can I go get KFC? I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be fucking rude. Right. I fart. Can in I go front get a big bowl? Right. So can I go get a big bowl from KFC, please? Right. Because <laughs> that shit actually t- tastes good. <laughs> love your grandmother's <laughs> recipe. I'm gonna go get some extra crispy though. So like, do you want anything? Do you want anything? I know you want mac and cheese. Yes. I know you fucking do. I know you want mashed potatoes. <laughs> it's, like, you want some coleslaw. We, it's like we have a Bojangles down the street. You know what I mean? It's like you want some Bojangles? She's like, don't even ask. Just bring it. Yeah. Mac and cheese. Just fucking make it happen. Mac do and cheese. Now. She just says this side. Mac and cheese. Make it so number one. Right. <laughs> I'm a dirty rice kind of guy. I am a dirty. I- Well, and I bring this up literally for this episode because I love dirty rice. Even though we ate that shit all the time in the chow hall, I I used to have dirty rice in the morning with some eggs, and that shit is banging. I'm just throwing it out there, America. Enjoy. Which, okay, little side thing here. 
my wife's cousin, we lived, she lived with us for a little while. And uh, I didn't realize this, but she disdains rice. Like, it's creepy to her. <laughs> and like really? the texture of it in her mouth and stuff like, which I understand, but I think is hilarious. Like, don't tell me that you don't like feet. I'm going to throw my dirty socks at you. You know what I mean? Like, I'm that dude. I'm that kid. Right. Met a lady who didn't like cotton balls one time. Just freaked her out, threw cotton balls on her just to see what happened. Don't tell me that shit. You know what I mean? I do. Anyway, so rice, dirty rice, delicious, even if it is a tea. So I made some, uh, I made some badass rice last night here at home. Nice medium grain fucking rice with, uh, Mm. I add like a can of tomatoes and a can of succotash Look at you. and and then i mix it all up put it in the oven let that shit bake for i don't know 20 minutes or so shit's yeah. delicious mm. and if i can get my kids to eat it then you know game right. on right the boy loves bacon what else well three uh, hots in a cot what the fuck well, where where I was going with this, especially with the deer day, with the deer day rice, we had. Uh, so I know exactly what you're talking about as far as those tea rats and what they would do in order to boil the water, heat it up, everything else. They oh, had the big so green fucking, tubs, right? Uh, and like off. the worst was the eggs, in my opinion. And Ugh. there was a lot of other stuff. But God bless the cooks for trying. And every once in a while, they would actually try to like. You know, they were always trying to cook a, a decent meal. Don't get me wrong, but they would actually, you know, like fire something up and cook like steak or something like that once in a long, long while or or on the Marine birthday. Um, well, they're only they're only, you know, they're they're held to what they can get. Right. It's just one of those things like fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. If like, yes. you know, work it the fuck out, man, there's. Ways to get that shit. Nah, yeah, I don't know. If you're oh, in a goddamn war zone, it's a little hard, but it's one of those things like, all right, so you roll up in a Humvee. Yep. I'm sorry, but you're if you're in freaking Iraq, all yeah. right, or or Afghanistan or wherever, <clears throat> you roll up to a market day, jump out, offer the freaking the market guy, like his, you know, the guy at the stall. Yeah. Like, you know, give him a thousand dollars. American for his entire freaking thing, his entire right prop that he just has sitting there, right? You think he's not going to fucking sell to you? And guess what? It's probably not going to be poisoned, right? Or there's not going to be an IED laced into it somehow. Mm -hmm. So just do that shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Now, I'm sure. easier said than done. I'm chair. You know, I'm arch armchair quarterbacking. But there are ways around everything else. I mean, oh, dude. we'll pay these motherfuckers not to shoot us, but just buy some goddamn food. Like, you got to do it on the, you know, it's just like you do an operation. You know, right. plan it out, violence of action, but it's about getting fucking food. And you do it with money, lots of money, and you freaking jump out. I mean, we're giving these guys billions of dollars with, to not shoot us, but yet they'll turn around and shoot us. You can well, fucking do the same thing, but you have to do it on a strategic level and freaking do it. And shock and awe, you hit the stall market up, boom, here. Here's more money than you'll make in a year, which to us, it's like, yeah, whatever. Seriously. And you know I'm right. Oh, you freaking yeah. hit them with that. You give them as much money as they would make in a month for one day's worth of fucking market rations, and you freaking take it. And you'll feed you know, your guys good for a freaking day or two. Yeah. And – you know, at least there'll be something fresh and at least the cooks will be happy because they're doing their fucking jobs. Right. Just saying. Well, an inner, there's more to morale. It's all morale. In Ramadi, especially, we would bake it into our patrols to where. Right. Like there is this pomegranate tree, which was perfectly positioned to where he could get a gunner underneath of it in various stages. So he had about 30 seconds to pop up out of his turret and grab as many palm granite as he could before the next gunner went through. And we grab like, you know, 12 palm granite and then wind up eating them near the fire later on. 
Or we I mean, because would... let's be honest, most of the freaking market vendors aren't jihadis. Right. Or, or else they wouldn't be market vendors. Right. Well, on the other doing jihadi shit. The other thing too is like uh I mean there's like we would we would talk to one of the vendors or one of the guys that was near our PB. This was on the second tour, and he would call over to his brother who would go and pick up whatever we ordered. And then his brother would come over to his vendor stand and we would pay him. So his brother was going and getting everything at cost as an Iraqi and then walking over and giving him the chow, you know, so like that one guy (laughs) could have been. And of course, we had tabs on that dude. Let me tell you what, like, where's your brother? What's his address point? show me and we had rudimentary maps we called them iraqi shows and i think well i mean that's what you can show an iraqi that shit and so uh he showed me where his brother lived or showed us where his brother lived so that we could kind of keep tabs on that one dude who is going and getting all of the stuff but i'm sure that they were making easily 500 percent on us you know five bucks for like a like a bag of wraps and everything else that was necessary for 20 bucks. You could feed your whole platoon easily. Right. Um, That's what I'm saying. But it had to go through that. It couldn't go through like pull up in the market. Hey, you know what I mean? Um, Sometimes we did that. Sometimes for show, we would do that. Um, We would also get all sorts of stuff like sodas that we couldn't get on base. Yeah. Um, yeah, we would run down to a, there's like a convenience store down the street. Yeah. And literally buy like Coke right off the market or whatever, you know, right off the yeah. the economy. And we weren't supposed to do that shit, but you know what? Come on. Well, that was. I'll so- tell you what, that fucking guy hooked us the fuck up all the time. He was like, oh, you know, he like he was happy as fuck to see us. You know, it's like, oh, it was yeah. whatever. I don't know. I mean, yes. If, if I don't know. That was something. I, I, it's just one of those things, man. It's sometimes you just got to do shit. Well, and that was that was something where it was like it was totally acceptable, and it was something that we needed to do because we were actually monitoring. You know, in a counterinsurgency, you're monitoring the overall population. We would go in and we would buy all sorts of shit. We would buy all sorts of shit, and they're like, "What? You know, souvenir for your wife or something like that?" Like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. But what we were doing. Dude, we could buy cell phones. We could go and, you know, you're doing all of these other searches and stuff. You find a box of washing machine timers at a guy's cell phone shop. Yeah. I'm thinking about pistol I mean, whipping I mean, death. I mean, seriously, what the fuck do you think that is for? Right. You know, duh. And he's like, no, nah, moosey in, moosey in. Like, oh, yeah, it's going to be real moosey in, motherfucker. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, because guess what? There's about there's about three washing machines in this whole goddamn city, right? And you've got and you've got fucking twelve timers sitting in your showcase, right, motherfucker? And not only that, it's in your goddamn cell phone shop, you dumbass. Like those are the right. that and an explosive. What are you the, and you are you the fucking <laughs> right? Are you the Maytag man, motherfucker? Oh, Jesus, Christ. all of a sudden, Christ. you know, right? <laughs> No. And then you're like, hey, man, I think I got something. Meanwhile, Mike's over at the falafel saying, like, oh, car. I think I, this is a good idea. Oh, I just yeah. pay this guy five bucks. I don't think he's got anything. I just tested everything he's got. It's not poisonous. Okay. <laughs> just, okay. Suck down. <laughs> I just sucked down a falafel good, and a fucking rap. Good, wor- good, good work, Bennett. Can I get that name with you? Let's get a V. <laughs> that in. fucking, that fucking Let's get a V. Right? Let's get a V on it. Let's get feet. We're in combat. <laughs> I mean, fuck. Uh, uh, you got, you you got know, like I got, Suzuki sauce running down your face. Right, right. Chin. You got cucumber <laughs> sauce <laughs> fucking everywhere. What are you doing? I was search. I was searching the vendors. Ah, shit. They don't heard- call it tzatziki there, but I don't. I don't remember what they call it in. Uh, they call it tzatziki in obviously Greece, but they have cucumber sauce. All over the motherfucking all the bed and the Middle East, but I don't know what they call it in each country, so I just fucking call it tzatziki because <laughs> right. at least 
we know what the fuck we're talking about. I knew exactly what you meant because that's what goes on that stuff. Cucumber sauce. Who the fuck doesn't know that? Mm. God damn it. Delish. That shit is so fucking good, bro. It really is. It's so you mm. might be fat if tzatziki sauce becomes a beverage. <laughs> <laughs> Ben, it, ben, it's like downing honey, tzatziki sauce, it's and fucking, gravy, brown gravy. He's like, he's like, I'll drink sriracha from the bottle. <laughs> fucking hey, yum yum sauce. Like, dude, yum yum sauce is good shit, bro. Dude, we <laughs> we had yum yum sauce, but we were eating with the Afghans, and so we were like, how the fuck are we gonna do this? And so. <laughs> So I took the top off the sriracha and put it on the yum yum <laughs> sauce and then just like scooped it in my mouth and then squirted yum yum sauce in there. And I'm like, yeah, that works. That's a little spicy, little spicy mayo freaking helps that's, anything. That's delish. Oh, shit. Hell that's yeah. fucking fun. Mm. Yeah. Brown gravy. You might you might be fat if brown gravy becomes a beverage. Right. Oh, <laughs> uh, fuck. I think I can put brown gravy on everything. Anything. You're almost, ruining your life. You're uh, ru- oh, fuck. Have you seen that video on the internet? Yes. Oh yes. my god, dude. I'll make a little gravy. So there's a there's a thing. All right. So the home of Four Drone, Watertown, New York. Uh, there is a place. God, what's it called? I want to say it was called Moe's Place or something like that. It, it's a diner, right? Mm-hmm. And because. The last, let's see, when I got back from Egypt in 02, I basically bounced. Like, I, I was a bouncer. That's what I mean by bounce. I bounced at a whole bunch of different bars in Watertown and up in uh, Alexandria Bay, up on the Canadian border, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and every night, most place was like two blocks from my house in Watertown. So... Almost every night after that, free after we do that, we'd you know have a couple beers and then I drive home, and I'd stop in Moe's and they had this thing. It's you know they make it's one of those places that makes garbage plates, right? Oh and yeah, yeah. Most people know what a garbage plate is, but I didn't want the whole garbage plate. I just wanted a giant fucking plate of mac salad, right? Right. But then they would put brown gravy on it. Oh my god. So it's pure tea, like, you know, and I wasn't smoking weed. So it's just, it just tasted good, bro. (laughs) You know how like, you'll, you know, you'll eat some weird shit, but fucking man, Mac salad with brown gravy. Don't knock it till you try it. Definitely ain't eating out of a fucking mermite. So (laughs) same. Oh my God. That is hey, fantastic. It's every, you know, everyone's got their little fucking quirky shit, but that shit was fucking good, bro. <clears throat> oh, for sure. It's one of those accidents. You know, it's one of those accidents you find when they're making a garbage plate. You know, because you could get like baked beans and all kinds of crazy ass shit. But, you know, a little brown gravy slipped onto the mac salad and you try it and you go, oh, fuck. That's <laughs> fucking good. That's fucking good. I am dying. Oh. Well, oh my god. Well, we're almost we're almost we're almost through with three oh hots in a cot. God. Yeah, man, on to the cot because I was looking through pictures the other day and uh I stumbled across some just like messed up water damage photos. And one of them was a picture from uh my my rack in Romani on the first tour. And I was like, damn, dude, that looks like pretty hooked up. You know, as far as like, I remember that being kind of a comfy spot, you know? Um, right. Right. Even though you're in Romani, you know, it's kind of like, whatever, man, I'm warm and snuggly in my bed. Cause it was a winter deployment. So, I mean, it was cold in there at times. Right. Um, But then I was going through our media on the back end, remembering having, like, food poisoning or fucking dysentery in Kajaki. And I'm laid out in green on green with 
and fucking bare feet on like a green pole cot, absolutely hating life, which I was sweating balls in this picture, just like sweating. And then not but five minutes later, I was in all of my sleeping system, like including the, the bivy sack, like the, the black, the green, I was freezing. And then I would unzip it and I was sweating balls and then, oh man, it was bad. And yeah, then, man. And we had a Haji shitter. Hello. <laughs> That's the fucking worst. <laughs> Just like, oh, ha ha, this is going to be bad. I got to grab my uh, baby wipes for that one. It's, you always grab the baby wipes, no matter what. Don't get me wrong. Holy hell. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, those cots, man, those pole cots. Are awful. Let's be honest. Yeah, well, I have a bu- I have a bunch of them. They're awful unless you're able to find or get that like inch and a half green mat that you that they actually make for them that you can lay across the top and then tie down to the um, corners. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, yeah. For oh sure. yeah, babe. that actually you know when you you can sleep on that for a year. Been or done that. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Um, like that's okay. But when you get one of those things, you literally might have to fight people off with a knee tool. Just right. saying. Exactly. Well, if, I, if they don't just hand them out to everybody. And not, not not I mean, sometimes they do, but not not all the time. So just saying. See, on that last tour, I said, fuck it. I'm not bringing my I mean, like I had a standard issue ISO mat that I brought with oh, me. Oh, still, it's awful. But awful. I had, I brought um, my, I'll call it like an air mattress, like my air thermo rest camping mattress, mm-hmm. which right. is badass. That thing is awesome. And there, there are times like this is no joke. There are times where I have pulled that out and gone to sleep on it on the floor here at my house. Because it's more comfortable. Yeah, man, I hear you. Um, but that on the cot really isn't that bad. The problem is you get wicked hot, especially when it's like just crazy balls hot out. Oh yeah, you only Bro, I mean, want there's that no, canvas. You got no, you got no ventilation. <laughs> well, right, exactly, and it's trying to keep you warm. That's the intent. So, so here's what I figured out, right? Because I'm six two. So sleeping on one of those cots is fucking miserable for me. No matter what, if I try to bend my knees, they're still on the metal. And then if I try to like throw my ankles over the end, you have that pull. So what I do is I set up the head of the the cot. And then at the bottom, I kind of like take that pull and stretch it across. But underneath of the cross members. Yeah, you don't you don't snap it in. Right. Right. And or then, else it's going to cut. You're going to have your feet amputated because right. there's not going to be any fucking circulation. Right. So then, I mean, it was just so balls hot that we would just lay, you know, on our back. But there is a problem, though. So I, I started sleeping kind of like on my stomach. But you don't know what to do with your arms. Right, you can't put them around like over top. You have to kind of keep them underneath of you, which again, it's balls hot, so you don't want your arms underneath of you. So, I kind of figured out with a couple of shirts, like a couple of skivvy shirts, and a couple of old, you know, like the travel pillows that I got. It was the coolest option. Plus, I could wash the skivvy shirts, you know, as pillowcases. Um. But I, I would put it as like a like a triangle up near my face, and then I would sleep with my hands up there and try to blow my breath down near my chest. Now, there's two reasons for doing this. One is it was kind of sort of the most comfortable way to get in. But two, I got really sick of waking up with flies in my mouth all the time. <laughs> because... I was like, I would wake up with like three or four flies like in my mouth. You know, because you're just sweating into a cot all night. You have like two cot or you have two canteens that are next to you and then maybe some Gatorade or whatever. But I mean, there's no AC or anything else like that. And just 
you know, fly strips all over the place and stuff, but you got one or two rogues that are in flight at all times. And right. uh, they land on your tongue. Um, you know? And I'm like, you know what? I don't want that anymore. So, uh, so I figured out that sleeping methodology so that, and the other thing too is the sweat would pour down my chest and belly. And as I breathed, it would kind of like blow a little bit. You know what I mean? Like I was ac yeah. myself a little bit. You know how when you're oh in Mop 4, right? You're walking around like a fucking moon man. <clears throat> you're in Mop 4 and you're sweating. And then right. you put your hands up in the air and all the sweat runs down your arms. Oh, oh into your Jesus armpits Lord. all the way down. Oh, past your thighs. You're like, oh, that's so gross, but it feels so good. Oh, God. It's like 120 degrees outside, and they made you go mop for you bastards. So. See, on the on the adverse or the converse side of that, you've got swimming in the fucking intercoastal waterway in February in North Carolina, and all you want to do is piss your fucking wetsuit <laughs> to get warm. Oh, God. Just saying, hey, go from one extreme to the other. Good job. And it's always Ricky got Recon. to do with nasty fucking bodily fluid, baby. Good job, Ricky Recon. Oh, shut up. Shut up, mop four motherfucker. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, dude. Going from Ramadi, I'll snuggly in this weird cot thing with those Iraqi sleeping pads to Kajaki and Sankin, where we had cots. Hmm. Right. right, You know, the, the bottom line is with those green cots, though, is there's a break in time. If it's not a you like oh, I'm not a, a, a used cot, you know, they're so fucking loud, man. Like if you want to roll over. Oh, oh, my God. You fucking they're so fucking loud. They wake you up, you know. So, you know, there's a good two to three month break in time where you got to like you know, after constant using the thing, it finally stops fucking squeaking. It's like the, it's like those good pair of BDUs, the white ones, right? The yeah. white BDUs. There's a break in time. Takes a while for them to get to feel like freaking pajama pants. Same thing with the fucking cot. So, yep. Just saying. Oh yeah. No, I totally agree. I think it's hilarious though, because I'm picturing Kuwait, which is like, you know, a shrink wrapped Quonset hut, plywood floor, shit tons of cots, and everything's creaking. It sounded like a ship. <laughs> oh, fucking horrible. <laughs> oh, good God. Yep. Three hots and a cot. It's the way Bosnia was, too. It's quant you know, the fucking plywood just. Every every squad's got a freaking room there, and you've got like eleven guys all sleeping on cots. And every time they roll over, it's like rrr, rrr. right. The only advantage there is that they made it so you could black out the windows because we work twenty four hour ops, you know. Right. So we could go totally dark, which was badass. But the problem with that is, is you would sleep until you know whenever you're able. But it could be three in the afternoon. You have no fucking idea. So if you've got a day or two off, you're like, it's like being in a casino. You have no fucking idea what time it is outside. Right. <laughs> and there's, where's the fucking exit to this oh place? Oh, my God. And you come out and it's like you come out of like a cave of hibernation. Because you know what it's like, man. When you run, you know, operations for 24, 36 hours at a fucking click. Yeah. And then you actually get the chance to sleep and you sleep like 12 fucking hours. Right. And then you wake up, it's like three in the afternoon, but, and you haven't eaten it in like two days. You right. know, you're like, what the fuck? Oh, stumbling and falling because there's actual sunlight and just, <laughs> just fucked up, man. So, whoa, those, those were the days. Those were the fucking days. <laughs> and to say we actually miss it, what the fuck? fuck is wrong with us uh, it's because it was fun we missed the idea of it that's what it is we wouldn't actually 
very rarely would you be like, okay, let's, let's go, let's do this. Like I'm a 43 year old man. Fuck you. I mean, it <laughs> sounds cool. Like, but when it got real, I'd be like, yeah, I think I'm good. <laughs> I'm beyond it. Totally beyond it. Yeah. So that's all I'm saying. I'm all mushy and fucking fat now. And mosquitoes don't break their teeth when they bite me anymore. They actually leave marks and that shit hurts and the itches. <laughs> you don't want to live in a swamp anymore, huh? No, fuck no, bro. Oh, fuck you. Mm. Mm. Yep. I'll stick with yeah. my three hots and a cot then. That's right. I will stick with my fucking three hots and a cot. I, there's no more sitting in a hide site in the middle of a swamp. There you fuck go. you. <laughs> Although that was like a badge of honor back in the day. Yep. You know, like you. Yep, sat there, didn't move for 12 fucking hours. Yeah, what's Didn't even up? scratch my fucking face. Shit myself didn't even twice. Scratch my face. Right, right, <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? And that shit was like a badge of honor. Been there, done, I got the t-shirt, I'm good. Three hats and a cot, please. <laughs> wife, wife, make me some fucking dirty rice. Yes. I'll remember that shit that way. I'll remember <laughs> three, and throw in a little fucking uh, cucumber sauce with that shit so I can... Fucking have fond memories of the fucking shit. <laughs> but I'm good. But I'm good. And give me my purple to sleep on because those mattresses, I wish we had an affiliate sponsorship with them. Those motherfuckers are badass. Just your, to let you know. Your purple? It's called, no, it's called, that's the, that's the brand. It's called purple. If you don't know it, check it out. It's the best fucking thing I've ever owned in my entire life. All right, Just saying. Then. You get all right, sweet. Three hots in a cot. I'm sure you guys have your own stories. Uh, by all means, share them with us. Uh, please check out the homepage over at Cigars and Sea Stories where you can suggest a guest, you can recommend a friend, um, recommend to a friend, Cigars and Sea Stories. Uh, hit us up on social media. We're always responding to people's messages on there. We really do appreciate your five-star reviews. You guys are awesome. And uh, we will continue with the, the back and forth. We have been doing a lot of work behind the scenes over here. And if you want to get signed up, you can do so. Uh, you can get signed up for bonus content. You can get signed up for behind the scenes content. Just go ahead, get our newsletter, and uh, and that'll start the process. You'll see. We're not doing newsletters the same way. You'll yeah, whatever. You'll see. Thank you so much to our sponsors, Heroes Media Group, Spartan Media, and VeteransList.us. Veterans List, you can get a featured membership half off by entering discount code Cigars and C. Spartan Media makes websites. They made ours. They can make yours. Get in touch with them at SpartanMedia.com. And Heroes Media Group. They are a network uh, that we are a part of, and Adam Bird runs that, along with the Decision Hour and a lot of other shows. He's interviewed a lot of cool people, and uh, you guys should totally check it out. So check out Heroes Media Group. Give them some feedback. Tell them what you think about the podcasts that are on there. It, it You know, it's cool. We dig it. So... Hope you guys are having a great day. We are going to hear a factoid or something useful, I hope, from Bennett here. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not useful. What do you got? <clears throat> but all right. So everyone is uh, now I'm sure for the veterans out here, they've eaten a lot more insects or spiders. Uh, but on in the course of an average lifetime. You will, while sleeping, since this is this is episode specific, because Mike brought up his little fly mm. fucking thing. Protein. In the course of an average lifetime, you will, while sleeping, eat 70 assorted inse insects and 10 spiders. I don't know how they came up with that fact or, or that stat, but I'm sure for veterans it's a lot more. They probably... Uh, Look, I'm just going to say it. Asia and Africa as continents throw off the curve. I'm just, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. South America, too. Yeah. I just, they got folks running around with fucking loincloths on, bro. I'm just saying, those folks are ingesting insects. Yeah. My house. Mm, well, but not. this is, this is saying in their sleep. Right. They sleep in so fucking means... hammocks and open huts. There's no screens oh, on that window. You don't knock. 
Donut hat, donut hammocks. Those things are badass. Oh no, I hear you. I'm not knocking the hammock. I'm knocking the lack of screens <clears throat> on the windows. Just throwing it out there. Just yeah. throwing it out there. That's a good factoid. That is a damn good 70, factoid. 70 assorted insects and 10 spiders on average. I hope you folks start sleeping with a goddamn dental dam on. Maybe like a, what do you think? Somebody out there is going to freak out from this. We'll figure it out. Just lots We'll figure of out some product. We'll figure, it's just sleep with the head net on. Oh, man. Remember I'm, that fucking head net they used to issue us? I'm just sleep with my airsoft mask on. I'll look, like, I'll look like Shredder from Ninja Turtles. It's fucking badass. I've got a skull on it. <laughs> uh, so fucking badass. I painted it myself. That is why you listen to the end of the show. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. And on that note, we cue the news. I'll flag up to every breeze From dawn to setting sun